I think the, the biggest problem in philosophy as a whole uh, is, uh, is the question of whether everything in this universe is purely material, that it's unconscious uh, originally and it is without any thought or feeling or purpose or value, it's just things, lumps of matter with mass and position and velocity which exist. Whether that's true or whether there's a mind-like reality which is conscious and valuable and purposive uh, at the root of uh, everything that exists. Now that's a huge problem with which philosophers have always dealt and most of them have been idealists in this rather wide sense. An idealist in a very wide sense is a person who thinks that mind or mind likeness, something conscious uh, and intelligent, perhaps capable of thought and feeling, is at the basis of reality, is the most real thing that there is. And that matter is somehow dependent on that or expresses that consciousness or matter wouldn't exist without it anyway. So that's an idealist. Whereas a materialist is the opposite, who thinks that mind might not exist at all, it's an illusion, or, it's, or mind depends totally on material reality and it'll cease to exist when matter ceases to exist. Okay, so that's your big question. And for me, philosophy is, is a lot of different questions, of course, but they all f center around that, that one big question, mind, matter, uh, which one has priority, and perhaps are these separable? If you look through the list of philosophers, I mean, people like Plato and Aristotle thought they were just separable, the, that matter, the universe, just exists always, doesn't depend on any spiritual reality. But on the other hand, there is spiritual reality, God, perhaps, or for Plato, the good, which is called the ultimate value, supreme value, and they just both coexist. And that was the earliest philosophical uh, way of putting it, I suppose. Uh, and I think a lot of good philosophy is a spelling out of, of this. Usually idealist, there are some materialist philosophers, not many. Right, where do I go from there? Well, I'm mm -hmm. British, right? So uh, I was brought up, um, you can't help things like that. I was brought up in a tradition called British empiricism, Locke, Berkeley, and Hume. And they start their philosophy by asking, what is, what is the basis of knowledge? Where do I start to know things? And, you start, and they say, you start to know things by experience. You see, you hear, you touch, and you build up your knowledge from those primitive experiences. And they, they were idealists. That's not usually admitted, but they were idealists because they thought that ideas, what they called ideas, that, that is uh, visual sensations, tactual sensations, uh, auditory sensations, these sensations are what you build up your picture of the universe from. And they have uh, uh, two main characteristics, that have lots of characteristics, two main characteristics of these ideas is that they're private, that is, my ideas aren't your ideas, I can never know uh, exactly what your ideas are. If you didn't tell me, I don't know what you feel now. If you're not going to tell me, I wouldn't ever know. But you know, so they're private ideas. Uh, and also, they're very difficult uh, to, th to make fully objective. I think the best example for this is if you feel a pain. Say you've got a toothache. You feel a pain. You say, there's something I know that nobody else knows. <laughs> I've got a toothache. Uh, I locate it somewhere and I feel its intensity, so I know I've got a toothache. I never have a toothache that I don't feel. I mean, there aren't toothaches wandering around the world. Uh, only when I feel the toothache does it exist. So then I make a distinction between the things I feel, like toothaches, and the things that tell me something about the world. Like if I look at you, I may say, oh, well, I'm, I'm having private sensations, but they're, they're telling me that there actually is a you out there in the world. So you get the subjective-objective um, debate or duality, really. Uh, how do your perceptions, your ideas, relate to the objective world? Uh, and the British empiricists start there. That's where they start their philosophy. Um, and so that was how I started, and I still sympathize with that. Point. I, I'm an empiricist 
and an idealist, right? And Empiris is saying, well, all knowledge begins with experience. Experience is private and personal, really, and you build up a public world from that. Uh, and that means that in some sense, experience is, is um, well, that's mind-like rather than matter-like. Matter is the world you build up out of these experiences. But those experiences are private to you. They're known by you. They're part of your mental world. So that turns me into an idealist, right?